Well, for more on the humanitarian situation in Aleppo, Dr. Zahar Sahul joins us now from Chicago. He's a, also a senior advisor to the Syrian American Medical Society. Uh, Dr. Sahul, thank you very much for joining us now. I want to start off with uh, this report that chlorine gas was reportedly used in an attack on Wednesday. Now, you were recently in Aleppo. Wh while you were there, did you see any evidence of chlorine gas or any other weapons prohibited by the Geneva Convention being used on civilians there? I was in Aleppo right before the siege completed uh, four weeks ago, and we barely made it unharmed, me and my two colleagues. We had a pediatrician from Chicago, an orthopedic surgeon, and we provided medical care, to, much needed medical care to the victims of barrel bombing. At that time, there was uh, daily barrel bombings and airstrikes by the Russian and the Syrian regime. But there was no chemical attacks. Uh, but my organizations, uh, the Syrian American Medical Society, have documented a few months ago in a published report called A New Normal, ongoing uh, chemical uh, attacks in Syria, more than 161 chemical weapon attacks in Syria. Two-thirds of them happened after the Ghouta massacre in 2013, after the United Nations Security Council resolution to destroy the, 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 what's left from the chemical weapons in Syria. Most of the chemical weapon attacks that happened last year and this year are with chlorine gas. And yesterday in the Zabadiya neighborhood in Aleppo, more than 50 people flooded two hospitals with, with very limited resources, these hospitals listed, under siege and bombardment. And these patients, most of them are children and women, are all suffocating. They have shortness of breath. They have cough. Some of them had respiratory failure. Unfortunately, two children, uh, Sama and Muhammad, and their mom suffocated to death, and the doctors were not able to resuscitate mm -hmm. them. So these things are happening. People are worried in Syria. OK, let's talk about these limited resources. You've worked at uh, some medical facilities inside of Aleppo with local doctors and nurses. Tell us more about the medical care facilities and infrastructure there. And, and do you believe that regime forces or even the Russians are deliberately targeting these facilities? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I visited seven hospitals when I was in Aleppo. And each one of them was bombed several times in the past few years. I stayed in a hospital called, uh, called M10 in um, uh, eastern Aleppo. It was built underground, completely underground, because it was bombed 17 times in the last four years. And everyone in Aleppo and in Syria knows that this is the Syrian regime and the Russians lately have been bombing hospitals. I mean, these hospitals are bombed by barrel bombs, uh, by helicopters, and also by airstrikes. And only two countries that have this capacity, the Syrian regime and Russia. Um, so yes, I think there is a systematic targeting. There is an organization called Physicians for Human Rights that documented more than 360 attacks on healthcare facilities in Syria. More than 700 and, uh, 730 doctors and nurses were killed. 730 doctors and nurses were killed in Syria, in a developing countries. In the last month alone, in July, my organization, the Syrian American Medical Society, documented 43 attacks on healthcare facility in Syria, 15 of them in eastern Aleppo. So yes, there is a systematic attack. Doctors are targeted. Ambulances are targeted. And this is, again, against the Geneva Convention. This is a war crime. Each attack on healthcare facilities and doctors is a war crime. Mm -hmm. Now, you were based in eastern Aleppo, which is controlled by the opposition. Uh, I'm wondering if, if doctors and ambulances can travel between the two parts of the city, or can they, or, or do they? Um, Aleppo is a divided city uh, since uh, four years ago. There is no way to cross from eastern Aleppo to western Aleppo nowadays. Um, and also, eastern Aleppo right now is completely under siege. In the past, before the siege, if you are, let's say, a family member who want to unite with your uh, rest of family from the other side, you have to travel south, then go back from the other way. It takes about nine hours. It's a very dangerous trip, but there is no way to cross line. Uh, two years ago, there was a uh, humanitarian corridor between eastern and western Aleppo. It's called in, in uh, Syrian language, in Arabic language, Ma'bar al-Maut, the corridor of death. Because if you are living in eastern Aleppo and you want to go to western Aleppo, you have snipers on the government side that are shooting at you. I was in medical mission a couple of years ago, and all the victims that we received in the hostels were victims of snipers who are shooting to us, uh, shooting at, uh, at, the, at the people who are crossing. So people in Aleppo have fresh memory of this, what's called the humanitarian corridors. That's why they're very reluctant to cross uh, from side to side. All right, Dr. Zahar Sahlul, thank you very much for joining us on TRT World.